In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I offer this morning's Mass for Bruce Olson, and apologies for those online. We couldn't get the Facebook connection to work this morning, so we'll record the Mass, and then we'll post it later this morning. My friends, we gather as God's holy people to offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God. So let us now pause to call to mind our sins and to seek God's pardon and love. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to bring salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God of mercy and reconciliation, who offer your people special days of salvation so that they may recognize you as creator and father of all, mercifully come to our help, we pray, so that receiving gladly from you the message of peace, we may serve you, we may serve your will to restore all things in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you live in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Now, son of man, during the day while they're looking on, Prepare your baggage as though for exile, and again while they're looking on, migrate from where you live to another place. Perhaps they will see that they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage like an exile in the daytime while they are looking on. In the evening again while they are looking on, you shall go out like one of those driven into exile. While they look on, dig a hole in the wall and pass through it. While they look on, shoulder the burden and set out in the darkness. Cover your face that you may not see the land, for I've made you a sign for the house of Israel. I did as I was told. During the day, I brought out my baggage as though it were that of an exile. And in the evening, I dug a hole through the wall with my hand. And while he looked on, set out in the darkness, shouldering my burden. Then in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, did not the house of Israel, that rebellious house, ask you what you were doing? Tell them. Thus says the Lord God, this oracle concerns Jerusalem and the whole house of Israel within it. I am a sign for you, as I have done, so shall it be done to them, as captives, as they shall go into exile. The prince who is among them shall shoulder his burden and set out in the darkness going through a hole he has dug out in the wall and covering his face, lest he be seen by anyone. The word of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord. They tempted and rebelled against God the Most High and kept not his decrees. They turned back and were faithless like their fathers. 
They recoil like a treacherous bow. Do not, Do not forget, forget the, the works, works of the Lord. Lord. They angered him with their high places and with their idols roused his jealousy. God heard and was enraged and utterly rejected Israel. Do, Do not, not forget the works, the works of, the of the Lord. Lord. And he surrendered his strength into captivity, his glory in the hands of the foe. He abandoned his people to the sword and was enraged against his inheritance. Do, Do not, not forget, forget the works, the works of, of the Lord. Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Let your countenance shine upon your servants and teach me your statutes. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times. Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all of his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master said to that servant, Let him go and forgive him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. The whole purpose of our Lord's ministry is to come to live as us, to reconcile, to reconcile and to make whole what has been lost and what has been corrupted in sin, to reconcile us to the Father, to reconcile the whole of creation to the Father. And part of that reconciliation process is to extend God's pardon and forgiveness to the sinner. And the gospel invite us to reflect upon that today in our own life, in our own life, to recognize how God has forgiven us in Jesus Christ and how we are invited to further Jesus' ministry by extending that forgiveness to those whom we encounter. And forgiveness is one of those things that requires energy and requires vulnerability and trust. 
right? It takes a lot of effort and energy to forgive. It takes movement upon our part to do the forgiveness. In essence, when one forgives, one is taking on the burden of someone else's responsibility. Right? That's the nature of forgiveness. And so the Lord invites us to reflect upon our own life this day. What are those relationships in our life that are in need of reconciliation? Right? And to recognize that reconciliation is a two-part process. The part that we have control over is our action to forgive. Right? Now, obviously, the other party needs also to act to accept that forgiveness or to advance in that reconciliation process. But we have to do our part. And so the Lord invites us this day to forgive in the same way that he is able to forgive. Trusting in God's loving concern for us, let us now give voice to our needs. That the baptized may be signs of God's generosity and mercy in the world, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That conflict among people may be overcome by forgiveness and understanding, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That God's people may embrace their vocation to reconcile all people, we pray to the Lord. That family torn by conflict and pain may know reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. For an end to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. That the dead may rejoice in God's eternal mercy, we pray to the Lord. God of generous mercy, your anointed one commands us always to forgive, for you have wiped away the multitude of our sins. Make us signs of the mercy you offer in Christ, who has reconciled all creation to you, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Remember, Lord, that your Son, who is our peace and our reconciliation, had canceled out the sins of the world by his blood. As you look mercifully on your church's offering, grant that we, who joyfully celebrate this time of grace may extend to all the freedom of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just that she should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through, your, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race divided by dissension and discourse, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even now, by your spirit, you move human hearts to, so that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands and people seek to meet together. 
by the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, discourse is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfilled when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with this very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us to one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament of your Son, which we have received, increase our strength, we pray, O Lord, that from this mystery of unity we may drink deeply of love's power and everywhere promote your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to seek love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day, everyone.